Um, as I said uh, a minute, minute ago, we need, uh, we need data, so if you haven't, uh, give us some login attempts uh, at uh, juniordozen.net. Um, we'll need that for the, uh, for the demo later. Um, yeah, just, you know, don't be crass. Yeah. All the, the, the stuff that you type in here is your funny username or whatever. Don't make a joke. It's, it's going to show up on the screen. screen. Yeah. So so. I don't know if that made things worse or better. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, nice. All right. So um, for a big data solution to be uh, production grade, regardless of whether you're doing it with Juju or um, whatever, doing it manually, and, uh, there are certain properties that it needs to uh, represent. Um, you obviously have to be able to deploy it. You can't have a production grade uh, big data solution if you can't get it deployed in the first place. Um, there's a lot of components, uh, you know, for Hadoop, for instance, uh, name node, data node, uh, resource manager, node manager, um, a lot of different components that you have to get, know how to get deployed up uh, onto the machines where you want them, you know, how, how many machines you need, what things can be co-located. Um, you have to connect those together. There's a lot of configuration that goes into um, allowing the name node to talk to the data node, the resource manager to talk to the node manager, and the name node. Um, once you've got it up, you want it to be reliable. You don't want your big data solution to go away um, unexpectedly um, or be unavailable. Um, so uh, you want it to be repeatable. Um, you, uh, when you deploy this, um, when you scale, oh, I forgot to scale. You, uh, you want to be able to scale your big data. Um, once you've got it uh, deployed and connected together, if you realize you need more um, nodes to, to process your data because your data has gotten bigger, um, you don't want to uh, have to go through all of the headache of figuring out how to connect up the new uh, nodes. So you want to have a process so that you can do it uh, quickly, easily, and uh, reliably. Um, and it's, so it's got to be repeatable, uh, not just for scaling, but uh, you want to be you want it to be repeatable. Um, if you let's say you deploy it on the cloud, you're processing your data, you realize that the cloud is getting a little too expensive for you. And you've got some uh, bare metal that you want to deploy your solution on to leverage that. You want to be able to take your big data deployment and migrate it to your bare metal um, without uh, too much hassle. Um, let's say you want to uh, you know, test some ideas um, uh, on a dev machine, on your laptop. You want to be able to deploy your big data solution on, on that dev environment in the same way that it would be deployed in production um, so that you get useful data about uh, what, whether your idea is going to work at, on production at scale. Um, you want it to be observable. Uh, if there's a problem with your uh, deployment, you want to know what that problem is. You want to know that there is a problem, what that problem is, and what you can do to fix it. You want to know what's going on inside your system. You also want to be able to observe whether the system that you deploy is uh, satisfying uh, the needs for which you deployed it. Um, is it being performant? Is it giving you the, the performance that you need? Um, this leads into the idea of benchmarking. Once you've got your production uh, deployment out there, you want to be able to observe and benchmark to see if it can run um, run your workloads in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, and maybe you want to uh, tie into people, you want to be able to benchmark uh, on the cloud versus your bare metal. Confirm that your bare metal is giving you better performance and it's worth the uh, cost of transition. So these, regardless of how you deploy uh, or manage your big data, these tenants uh, are very important. And luckily, these are the core tenants of Juju. So <coughs> by using Juju, we get, we get this stuff um, for free, uh, you know, there, obviously we have to put the work in, but but Ju Juju gives us a mindset to give get these uh, these characteristics. Um, so the way that we've structured this is our uh, Hadoop offering for um, big data, um, and the way that we approached making this uh, meet those characteristics and and really be production quality is that we've got the charms that encapsulate all of the knowledge uh, about how to. Uh, configure each of the components, the, the data nodes and uh, node managers. They, those should be co-located co since they could process data locally. Uh, the resource manager, the no name node, um, all of those pieces, uh, how, to, how to set those up, get, get things installed, their dependencies, uh, is encapsulated in the charms. 
and you can reliably and repeatedly uh, deploy those. Um, they have status uh, reporting, so you can easily see what, what's going on inside that, uh, that node. Um, we've got the uh, operational knowledge of how to connect those pieces together. Um, so, and then uh, as, as a whole, our Hadoop cluster, we've encapsulated that with uh, what, we're, what we call the plugin, which is a, a defined interface for you to connect up the components, um, of which there are very many uh, different components in the big data ecosystems that you might want to connect to Hadoop in this case. Um, and you want to be able to swap those out easily. You want to be able to, you know, maybe you want a different vendor of the Hadoop core, um, and you want to be able to swap this out independent of the, uh, the clients or uh, services that you connect up. But more important, more uh, likely, you're going to want to connect up a bunch of different uh, services uh, specific to your solution. Um, so there are a lot of different services that you might want to connect to Hadoop um, for ingestion. Uh, you might want to do batch process uh, ingestion uh, using Flume. You can pull that data in. So we've, we've defined the interface on how you connect Flume to HFS. If you want to do real-time processing, you might want to use Kafka to, to pull data in uh, PubSub faster. Once you've got the data in, you'll want to process it. Um, for instance, you might want to use Pig to process your data. Maybe you don't like Pig and you prefer something more SQL-like, you can do Hive. All of these are using the standard interface. They can all connect up easily. Um, if you don't like Hive, uh, maybe you like Spark. And Spark is a, is a great uh, way to process the data. Uh, once you have it processed, you want to be able to visualize it. So you want to connect something like uh, IPy Notebook up to uh, Spark to give you the ability to query, um, <coughs> issue can Spark command, query the data, uh, make inferences. Maybe you don't like IPy Notebook, you want to swap out Zeppelin. Um, yeah? So, uh, Corey, so the. So the front end to this stack is interchangeable. It, in a sense, it's hot swappable. It doesn't matter what the rest of the stack consists of. We can switch out that spark, right. that spark piece right there with any other piece. Right, absolutely. The, the pieces that you need for your specific solution, you can just deploy them, uh, connect them together, because, because the knowledge about how these pieces fit together is encapsulated in the charms and in the relations. There is this. Is also true though. Cloudera will drop in behind this, and this will talk to Cloudera. And, right. so and you can swap out the mm -hmm. back end piece as well. And what this team, what I think that this team has done so beautifully is to start to standardize these interfaces so that if you're building stuff that needs to talk to Hadoop, you don't have to worry so much about which Hadoop that customer deployed, right? You can plug straight in. And vice versa, whichever one you deployed over here you can get access to all of this sort of diversity of ecosystem on the front end of stuff that's generating data or stuff that's answering questions out of data. Yeah, you, for instance, with the Spark, you don't have to, uh, we don't have to update the Spark charm to make it talk to uh, Cloudera. Uh, but you, it, it works because it uses that standard interface. Uh, I saw a hand raising yeah, back. I was just going to out as well. Obviously, with the way that it's designed on the screen, it's just one input output. Well, okay, but of course, you can plug in as many as you want, so you don't just have to start. Or do you want to? So, um, <coughs> no. I was going to say it's the same. Yeah. That's, that, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Um, so, for our, uh, I believe we're going to go to the demo here. Uh, oh, right. So, because, um, uh, go back one. Um, so, not only do you have, can you connect up all these components easily, but you know you create a bundle with, with these connections, these relations defined. It's really easy to deploy your solution. You know, Juju deploy, Juju quick start. It'll be uh, deployed and with two two point up. Um, and that allows you to deploy this bundle repeatedly, uh, easily, and allows you to uh, stop worrying so much about you know how to set up, and manage uh, Hadoop, and focus on the science. So you get to go to the, the point where uh, you're thinking about the problem that you really want to solve, which is not how to manage Hadoop. The problem you want to solve is, you know, how do I get the, you know, what information do I want to get out of my blogs or, you know, off of Twitter? What kind of analysis can I do with that information? And that's the science that you really care about. Um, so for our uh, demo, this is the uh, configuration that we use. Um, we're going to process the uh, SSH login uh, attempts. Yeah, what you guys did when you were doing this is 
filling up that log. Yeah, you're connected to the name node, uh, this component, and those log login uh, failure attempts are getting sent out through our syslog forwarder, um, ingested via Flume, uh, and then put <laughs> into HDFS. Once they're in HDFS, Spark can, um, can process those, and we can use Zeppelin to uh, <coughs> run queries against that and extract uh, useful information. So this is the model, right? And then we're, what we're going to do is um, so, bring up the Zeppelin piece so if to show you what this looks like. But before I do that, I need to start a recording um, to catch it for the camera. So give me just a second. Are you recording the slides? No, he's got okay. the slides separate. Okay. 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 All right, so if you haven't seen uh, Zeppelin before, um, it's an interactive notebook that you can uh, use to uh, run uh, queries against. Make uh, the box bigger? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, Zeppelin is an interactive uh, notebook that you can use to uh, uh, interact with uh, Spark, run queries. Um, take the data uh, and visualize it, you know, get uh, graphs, and then you could save that, uh, that notebook, the queries that you've run, uh, sort of as a presentation. And um, one of the really nice things about Zeppelin is that you can go uh, online and find uh, notebooks that other people have created and run them against your data um, to, you know, kind of explore what other people have, have done. So uh, in, this, uh, in this example, we are uh, pulling in some Pulling the data from Good HDFS. Good lord! 10,000 logins? <laughs> Somebody had a four loop. Sorry, I've been running a while. <laughs> <laughs> I want to win the prize. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to pull that data in. We're going to use uh, some Stala code to uh, process the log entries and extract out the information we care about. In this case, the username. Uh, those login, uh, that login information is going to get loaded into a temporary table that we can run SQL-like queries against using Spark SQL. Yeah, so actually I, I paused on the wrong uh, paragraph there. This is the one that will split out your usernames that we can take a look at. So let's yep. run that. I don't know how long it's going to take for 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Not okay, bad. Okay, it wasn't too loop. long. Are we supposed to stop now? Uh, <laughs> sure. So let's see who we got. All right, so you can see, if you can see the query here, we're just using SQLite to select out the username. Corey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you push so it looks like Marco's root, please, I'm assuming, is uh, the most popular at this point. Um, Dr. Apocalypse. Uh, uh, um, Ooh, clever, very close, yippee ki -yay. I like uh, curl pipe dash. <laughs> nice. Um, so as results are limited to uh, by a thousand, okay. Um, at any rate, so you can see uh, that this allows us to um, easily pull the data that we were getting from our syslog, and um, you know, just just logging uh, logging attempts is. Uh, yeah. yeah, I want to I want to show one more neat thing about uh, Zeppelin. So we get, I don't know. You missed a dot. No, it's just like demo. But Zeppelin gives you a whole lot of different types of. Um, interpreters that you can use to look at the look at the data so you get like SQL and as you was mentioned Scala and Shell um, and all kinds you of things. Jump to the top and can you open the, the list of interpreters? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so it just if you've never seen Zeppelin before we really like it as a way to interact with Spark and Hadoop um, just as a, a, an easy way to enter inter code there just I, that's, that's all I wanted to say just it's yeah. cool if you haven't played with it. Um, so, uh, so this, uh, using Juju, um, it's a great way to easily deploy big data. We, I do this, you know, three or four times a day, deploy a full Hadoop stack, uh, connect up a bunch of different components. Um, you know, it makes it really easy. I can do it over and over again. Uh, but we want to make sure that just because it's easy, it's still production grade. So, um, right. So. Uh, some of the areas of focus for our ongoing work for our, our team in particular uh, to really make this bulletproof um, and fully production grade um, is we want to make sure it's highly available. If your name node uh, falls over, you want to make sure it uh, fails over gracefully. 
Uh, we want to make sure it's secure. We want to leverage the work by uh, the other teams that were mentioned in the previous uh, demo, uh, our previous talk, the TLS layer. We want to incorporate that work and have make sure all the communications are secure between the components. Um, we want to make sure that it really scales to, to, big, to big scale. Um, our particular use cases, we've gone up to about uh, 200 so far, but we really want to make sure that you, know, you can get 1,000 plus nodes and you know, really process large, large amounts of data. Um, but this is, uh, this is a community effort. The work that we um, are putting into this, uh, we are, we're putting it in for, for the community, but we want the community to tell us, uh, you guys to tell us what you need to get done. Um, you know, what workflows uh, do you want to do with big data? Uh, you know, how, how can we make it easy for you to get your jobs into big data and get the information that you need? Um, what pain points, what friction have you encountered when working with big data? Deploying, running jobs, any you know, uh, managing it. Uh, you know what uh, actions you might want to take against your cluster uh, to you know if you need to back up or whatever uh, migrate. Um, we want to make those things easy, and we want feedback from the community and work from the community to really make this uh, high quality uh, production grade. Um, are there? Uh, do you have applications that you want to enable uh, users to use with big data? Um, you don't want to have, you know, if you're developing a, uh, an application, um, you don't want to have to worry about managing uh, the rest of the do. You want to focus on your application, making it awesome, you know, making it easy for the users to use, uh, and make it high quality uh, production grade. So, um, you know, we want to work with you to get charms for your applications and connect them up uh, to this ecosystem um, so that you can get users faster. And, um, um, and that information, that knowledge that we uh, discover as as a community uh, benefits the entire community. That um, you know that operational knowledge gets, gets is available to everyone. Um, and then to become a part of our community, um, we have uh, some ways of getting in touch with us. We've got a big data mailing list. Uh, we definitely want to have you join that. Uh, the Juju mailing list has a lot of uh, good information about Juju in general. Highly recommend you subscribe to that. Um, our big data blog. Um, we also have a getting started with a lot more information about what we're working on as a big data team um, uh, on our getting uh, off of the big data blog. Um, and we also talk uh, post uh, about the things that we're working on on the blog. Um, uh, as Marco mentioned at the beginning, developer.doodoo.solutions get some uh, free AWS uh, creds and get started with you know deploying this and um, so any questions? I think I feel like I went a little quickly but yeah. yeah. Uh Zeppelin's an integration of patches, so in terms of maintaining it, is it an actively maintaining charge and keep going to the update with the release coming out of the foundation or is it? Right. We're we're maintaining the uh, the Zeppelin charm. We we want the community to participate in that. Um, we want to engage the, the Zeppelin community and, and it's four o'clock. <laughs> Apparently it's four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but it's specifically for that. So our Zeppelin is at 055. I know 056 was just released within the last couple of weeks. Um, and so yes, the charm will be updated to, right. to reflect that. And that when you track something like an incubating project at Apache, that's <coughs> sort of the... I mean, in terms of, like, um, Corey was talking about um, getting the Apache guy more involved. I mean, do you have any traction within the foundation? Both of them in the I was the release manager for Zeppelin Zero for 26 and I'm uh, here, so hopefully it involved. Yeah, we do have a connection <laughs> with Zeppelin. But what's we have really cool about that is to users who are new to Zeppelin, they're getting the Zeppelin expertise in the charm, like the recommended way, you know, I'm sure, you know, we're going to make sure it's good. So when I try Zeppelin and I'm just using Zeppelin, I'm getting the recommended and good your way. Yeah. Exactly, to my knowledge, what it's done, so if you have a different data source, you don't have to use it and you check it out. Start off with it. You'll find a lot of charms. What they'll do is they'll initially encapsulate like a packaged, you know, whatever the dev is or whatever OS is deployed onto, whatever the stable release thing is. 
but most of the terms we work on, especially with active upstreams, uh, via configuration, you can say go grab the latest source from Git, or go grab the latest you know release straight from the release stream. Uh, so many things that you'll find in charms will actually be you know stable kind of out of the box. But like all of our OpenStack charms, for instance, can all be can all pull a Horizon or a Keystone or whatever straight from GitHub, so you can deploy with that option, and that will actually go pull that down, so you can live the bleeding edge life. What's nice is that. You can take that whole stack you've got there, make Zeppelin bleeding edge, and make sure everything still works while the rest of the stuff is stable, and use it for things like regression testing uh, or any kind of uh, you know uh, interconnecting testing and stuff you want to do across other components. Realizing that with that same tool and that same stack, I can change just the one part and, and try everything out. Should, should it be separate charm like dev charm or something? So. Uh, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we've got a uh, new charming experience that we're working on because that's come to light is that as we work on charms, you often want to have a development channel, we're calling it. Uh, so we have a new process that I'll talk about in a talk tomorrow that talks about how you can develop a charm and, and keep that separate from your stable charm because they're just software like anything else and I think we all run our development and we all run our stable. So um, that's a realization that, yeah, we're, we're learning from and working on. And so the question is more targeted to Juju. You have Juju Quick Start, uh, yes. and you said you can deploy bundles. How is that different from the actual Juju Deployer tool? Okay, so um, bundles are a collection of uh, charms and information about how those charms connect together. Um, the current uh, with Juju one uh, two two five five yeah. uh, pre pre Juju pre Juju two dot So this. Yeah. This is an old fashioned, I hang my head in shame at this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it, bundles were an incubator project, and so therefore they were, they were kind of built where you needed a tool quick start to be able to deploy the bundles outside of Juju itself. Uh, with 2.0 and in the alpha and uh, right now, you can actually Juju deploy a bundle just like a charm. They're all the same, they're in the charm store together in the same namespace, so uh, that's, you know, you, you can go deploy. Uh, Hadoop the charm or Hadoop dash something with that's a bundle of Hadoop solution or whatnot. So the reason they're confused with Mix is because we're right on that split between the old way and the new way and we're trying to struggle which one to tell you guys. Any other questions? But the quick start will go? The quick start will totally go. Yeah. Um, and it's just that with 2.0 you'll find quick start will get deprecated for the 2.0 uh, feature set there. If you're using 125, use quick start. And if you're using 2.0, just type Juju Deploy. Deploy. Yep. What you think it should have been. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to point out that so that that's the command I used to get that whole that whole solution, but right, that right. one command that line or or we have a GUI, you can just drag the, the bundle onto the GUI. Uh, or put the uh, deploy uh, support again. Anyway, um, yes, one command gets the entire solution. Um, all the components connect together the way they're supposed to be um, so that you can just start using it. And I'll show you, uh, just because we've got some time here, I'll show you what that looks like on a... <coughs> on a Mac. On a Mac. <laughs> uh, Do you want to make your font size bigger? Maybe? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so what... Uh, I will get big in those. So these are the services that made up that bundle there at the top, right? We just did the Juju Quick Start, that's the only line. It brought in these services, and you'll see that like the Compute Slave, there's actually three machines behind it. Um, and that, that's, a, you know, on, in the model, you only see that one application, but it's actually got a lot more under it. If we wanted to scale that, and since my manager's in the back, and he's paying for this, we can go up 50. <laughs> 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 uh, and so, and then that would just give us more compute slaves, right? That will suddenly have 50 times more, or whatever, from three to 50 times more um, storage space from our data nodes and node manager processing power. Um, and you'll, you'll notice uh, on the top right here, uh, those ready messages, that's the uh, status. Each of our uh, services in the big data uh, give you this extended status information, tells you exactly what uh, uh, you know how, how they're connected uh, or what their state is and if if they require action from you it explicitly says that you know if you forgot to connect your uh, yarn master to your um, HDFS master it'll say waiting you know block waiting for relation to HDFS 
can actually establish that. Well, it's still running the command. So this actually is a, a bit of a funny story. So at one point in time, George was giving a demo on his laptop using <laughs> Lexi containers. Oh boy. And he accidentally just ran juju add unit minus n. Instead of like 10, he added an extra zero. <laughs> so on these think pads, I mean, these think pads are good, but I don't know if they can handle 100 containers of a service running. Well, this is um, yeah, so what's, what seems to do now in Juju is instead of just sending that command to the controller and then the controller spins it all up, it kind of does it from your laptop. So if you have to press control C while you're scaling something, you can short circuit that now. <laughs> um, so it'll, it'll take a few seconds for it to requisition all the nodes and make sure they're in there, and then the command will exit, and then you can run Juju status and see them there. We should be able to just watch Juju status under the tab and see stuff start popping up though. Yeah, so you see there's more and more nodes are being added, they're being requisitioned. Amazon is now fulfilling that request. Uh, someone's being billed for it. Yeah. So say I want to run something on this Hadoop cluster. Right. How would I go about that? Um, well, the easiest way is uh, if, if it's something that you can just type in, you, uh, the Zeppelin would be a good way. Um, you can load, uh, say, a MapReduce job into the yarn. Um, uh, currently, you have to do, you do uh, SSH, but one of the uh, one of the ways we're going to address that is to have an action that you could point at a remote, um, you know, jar file. Um, but you can do do SCP the a jar file onto the uh, yarn master, and then just do a, a map reduce. Uh, you can do the same thing on uh, Spark and do a Spark submit. We're going to kind of improve that uh, use case uh, quite a bit with the with the action because. Uh, and are there plans for more actions like this copy and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that's what I was uh, talking about with the one slide. We, you know, we were a smallish team. We, we need to know what people really need to do with this. Uh, so we want community engagement. You know, do you, do you want to be able to copy your data from one uh, deployment to the other? Do you uh, back up and restore? Um, you know, what, what are the actions that you really need to, to be able to do against the big data solutions. But that kind of feedback is awesome, you know, like to copy between two clusters, this CP, right? That's an action that yeah. maybe wouldn't have been on my roadmap until you just mentioned it. So that's the kind of, of feedback, you know, that's really valuable to us. And then once it's in the charm, anybody can, you know, easily do that. Uh, you can do do action um, defined, I think. Yeah. Uh, to get a list of, uh, or a QG action list, of, or uh, it'll be later, but um, it's a service. Uh, so now you can see with the status, it's uh, now telling you that it's installing the uh, base Hadoop uh, li libraries. Uh, there's another one that's fetching uh, other resources. So it gives you good observability into what exactly is happening in these, uh, in these nodes. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, in terms of extra stuff you guys are planning to add. Sorry, I'm hard of hearing. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, you, like, obviously you have a Hadoop set up now. Like, yeah. In terms of a roadmap for the nearish future, what are the features do you expect to be adding in terms of charms or extra stuff to Hadoop? And when we want some feedback, you must have some idea about uh, sure. what you can do. Yeah, we've, we've been, uh, what, one of the things, actually, that's, I'm glad you asked that because it reminded me of something. One of the things that we've really been working on uh, is con uh, converting the big data charms over to using layers to make it really easy for you to um, add, uh, leverage those layers and create uh, solutions around your application, uh, get them in there. So we're finishing up that work uh, and we want to make it as easy as possible for anybody to uh, you know, get, become a part of this. Um, so that's one big feature. Uh, the areas of focus that I mentioned on the one slide are, are the things that we know we need uh, some improvement on that we're actively working on. Uh, high availability, we want to make sure that all of our services uh, that have uh, HA support uh, you know, are using that by default. Uh, we want to make sure everything is secure. We don't want to have any insecure communications going in through the cluster. And, uh, and that's a good one to build off of the TLS layer that right. I think we've heard about from Bruiser earlier. Um, what was the uh, third thing? I know I'm scale, big scale, big scale, more yeah. than fifty. Yeah, we've only tested it up to two hundred, and um, it you know it works well at that. But we want to make sure that you can really, really scale it up to a thousand plus. Um, 
So uh, the other, uh, another thing is, uh, like I mentioned, we, we want to make an action for um, getting jobs in, make it really, a, make a, a, have a good, nice interface for just running your jobs, whatever they may be. Metal? What's that? Metal? Uh, provisioning on metal? Oh, you can do that already. That's, that's Juju. Yeah. Yeah, you, this same bundle you can deploy. It. This is on Amazon. We've deployed it on uh, the Orange Box uh, many, many times. Um, you can deploy it. We, we can do it on your laptop uh, using containers. That works well. So yeah, we, we've got that. <coughs> Anything else? Questions? Comments? <coughs>